Today I'm going to show you how to see the beauty. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today, we got a really cool episode. This is actually an image brought to you guys by Amy. She's one of our contest winners. Last week's contest was just shallow depth of field. If you guys want to have your image edited here on Flurn, just enter one of our contests. You guys could win a Flurn Pro and have your image edited. Well, this is a very cool image. It's uh, basically like a map with some Scrabble tiles on it. Really cool composition, and I thought it might be really cool to have you guys learn how to actually like replace some letters. So oftentimes you'll see like a sign in an image or something like that and maybe you'll want to change the letters around. So I'm going to show you guys some really cool things on how to like warp around thing, warp, warp around your layers using transform tools. Some really neat tricks with that and I'm also going to show you a trick you've probably never seen with a healing brush tool as well. So let's get into the episode. I think you guys are going to really like it. All right. So we have Amy's image here which is very cool and uh, this is what we're going to be changing here. Right now it says see the world, which is totally appropriate. Um, we're going to make it say see the beauty, which is also just going to be really fun. Now, there's a change in letters. So we got B-E-A-U-T-Y. We're going to need to add a letter. And uh, I'm not going to worry about the Scrabble, the numbers down here at the bottom. But the first thing we need to do is uh, we're going to be changing these letters. So we need to get rid of the existing letters that are there. I'm not just going to add one letter here at the end. We need to actually get rid of uh, what they say on each of these tiles. So to do that, you have a couple different options. Um, you could just try to like, you know, clone stamp in from, from the sides or things like that. But what we're going to be doing is something a little bit different. And I think you guys are going to like it. Um, the reason why we're going to be doing this method is because there's not a whole lot of texture to work with here. So there's not a whole lot of texture on either side of these letters. And clone stamping is, it could just get a little bit messy when you're doing it and just could, could take a while. So what we need is a clean, like clean slate of uh, wood texture that actually looks something similar to that. So what we really want to do is copy a wood grain texture onto the top of these Scrabble tiles. So we did a quick search in Google and we pulled this guy up. So this is our wood texture here. I'm just going to hold down shift and click and drag from one image into another one. And we have our wood texture here. And now we're ready to actually start transferring it onto the letters. But we're going to be using the healing brush to do so. First thing we're going to do, let's cut. Let's take care of this uh, W. And first, I want to make sure that this wood texture uh, kind of like aligns with the W. So I'm going to hit Command T to transform. And we're going to rotate that around, something like that, until it's, the wood grain is you know, somewhat similar to what we've got going on here in the W. Maybe we'll just bring this down. And yeah, we'll use it from right about there. OK, now what we want to do is let's just zoom in, hit Command Plus to do that. We'll create a new layer. And I'm going to hit the healing brush tool. And I'm going to say sample the current layers and below, which is going to sample both this layer and what's on the bottom. So what we're going to do is I'm going to sample this texture. So holding down Alt or Option, we can sample this texture here. Let's just sample it right there. And I'm going to start painting over my W. So we're actually going to be painting in wood from the, from the wood that we have over on the left. And when I let go, it's going to match the colors for us. So we're sampling actual wood, and I'm literally just painting that in. And if you have anything that doesn't look perfect, you can just start to like paint it in a little bit more. OK, very cool. Now you can see it's a little bit too well defined. So what I'm going to hit, do is hit Delete. I'm going to uh, go to Gaussian Blur, and I'm going to blur this piece of wood really quick. So we're going to filter Blur down here to Gaussian Blur, and like 0.2 pixels, it'll, it should match that quite a bit better. All right, so let's try that again. A new layer, we'll grab our Healing Brush tool. And we'll just paint this on. You can see with that little bit of blur, um, things should just look a little bit better now. There we go. And take care of our edges. Very cool. So we'll do the same thing with our O. And as I do this, what I'm looking to do is hopefully try to match the, match the actual wood grain. So like the R here is rotated. So what we're going to do is click on this layer, hit Command-T, and then rotate that around. There we go. And now we have like wood grain that's going in the same direction as the R. So we'll go back to this layer, use our healing brush tool again. OK, and we'll sample that. And it's going in about the same. Well, it's not perfect with the direction. So we'll just hit Command-T, rotate it around. There we go. And now we have a better direction. So this is you know, from one wood texture to another. But if you guys are using like brick, if there's an area in your image that is brick and you need to kind of like recreate some of it, you can grab brick from other images and apply those onto your images as well. So it's the same technique that you would be using um, for basically any different texture. This one just happens to be wood. Um, and if you really wanted to match it, like if you wanted to get that grain pattern a little bit tighter, you would want to sample from an area that has either tight grain pattern 
or hit Command T again and just try squishing this. There we go. Let's try squishing that texture there using hit, uh, using the healing brush. And now we've got a tighter grain pattern. There we go. Let's try from right over here. So you should be able to get this like really, really close. Now this is a tutorial and I can't spend a ton of time on it, but you can see like already pretty nice. Um, and that's using a piece of wood that, you know, it's not even original Scrabble tile. This is not even Parker Brothers approved Scrabble wood. So <laughs> there we go. Didn't take too long. So this is a couple of blank Scrabble tiles. Now what I want to do is transfer. We just need to create a new layer. I'm going to just clone stamp this guy. So we're going to hold down Alt or Option. We're going to clone stamp over here. And I'm going to clone stamp another Scrabble tile over here because we're going to spell out a word that requires one more letter than we had originally. All right. And if you wanted to join your, um, you know, join everything down on the bottom, you could do that as well. All right. It, it really depends on, you know, when you guys are doing this sort of thing, it's going to totally depend on how much, like how perfect you needed to be. Um, trust me, you can make this, you can do this very, very flawlessly. Even things like the road where it doesn't line up, like a quickle, a quickle, <laughs> quickle is not a word apparently, uh, a quick sample of that color with a brush tool and just paint over here, you know, hold alter option to sample with the brush tool and just paint over there. And then, you know, that area that didn't match the road, it's like, oh, now it, now it matches. doesn't look like we cloned some, something out. So all kinds of really cool tricks that you can use to make things look like they're actually uh, should be there. Okay, let's go ahead and group those. Let's group our piece of wood and uh, we can see already we're off to a good start. So the next thing we wanna do is take care of the actual letters. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's hit our type tool, so T for the type tool. And what I'm gonna do is just type in capital letter B. Okay, now we have our letter B. Let's just go ahead and get it to about the right size that we want it. We'll just do a rough comparison here. Um, that looks a little bit too big. So let's just scale that down a little bit. There we go. And now what we're gonna do is just go ahead and change the color. So go to window down here to uh, character and we're gonna click there, make it like a pretty dark gray. We don't need it completely black, but a pretty dark gray should do that. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is create a square and I'm gonna use this square to, um, there we go. We're gonna use the square to actually size our tiles. And I just want this a pretty close to the original size of a tile. If you want to spend more time on that, you know what, a little bit bigger, I think would work. If you want to spend a little bit more time getting your size exactly right, um, by all means do so, but I'm just going to get it pretty close in this case. All right. And I'm holding them down shift to make that about the size that we want. I think just a little bit smaller. There we are. And we're just going to fill this with a color. So this pink color or whatever really doesn't matter. Okay, let's put our B over top of our um, over top of our letter here. All right, let's just be sure that's about the right size. And this is probably just a little bit too big. There we go. Now I want to center these with each other. So I'm going to shift click the two of those. And here on my move tool, I'm going to center them vertically and then set them horizontally. So we've got a full center here. All right, we're going to hit command G and we're going to group those. So what we've got now is we've got a B that's centered inside of a square. And what we can do with that whole group is I'm going to hit Command T with the whole group, which is going to bring up our little warps here. We're going to line up one of our corners. Then I'm going to hold down the Command key and click this little guy. And what's it going to do is allow me to do a perspective warp. So we're going to click here and I'm going to line that area there. And then I'm going to click here and we're going to line that area just like that as well. So not very hard, guys. I'm going to hit Command J and we're just going to do this a couple times. Each time uh, you can hit Command T and kind of line these up. Now, actually, you know what just happened is when I hit Command J and duplicated it, now we hit Command T and it's rotating the entire shape. So it's not going to, it's not going to be as easy for us to warp this because it's not actually using the corners because it's, it's a redefined shape. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go back in time. All right. I think you guys know what I was saying. Like here I can actually grab the corners and it's going to just work before it wasn't as accurate because we already did the transformation. So what we're going to do is I'm going to just change it. We're going to go B. I'm just going to hit command J for each one of these groups. There we go. And we're going to do them each separately. So each of them is going to get its own transformation. Okay. So here we are with group three. We're going to hit command T hold down the control or the command T the control or the command button. There we go. We've got B. 
All right. If you wanted to go in here and uh, the background color that we've chosen, this uh, like magenta color, if you wanted to go and change that the opacity on that so you could see through a little bit better, that would make it a little easier as well. All right. So all kinds of really cool tips on, you know, matching things up as far as perspective goes and, you know, getting rid of background colors and things like that. Because each of these, you can't use the same, you couldn't use the same perspective for each of these because they're not the same. See, they're rotated around differently and things like that. Um, it would just wind up looking really off. There we go. And I'm using these squares as a reference point so I can actually like, you know, measure the B's or whatever they are on the actual letters. Okay, so th we're gonna start right back with group number three. We're gonna double click here and we're gonna, that is a B, so we're gonna make that invisible there. We're gonna open this one. This is gonna be an E, right? An E, and we're gonna make that invisible. So we're using, this is gonna be an A, we're using those pink areas to define where on the actual tiles these are going to be and have them warped into the exact right perspective. This is gonna be a U. And now we're just making those backgrounds invisible when we don't need them anymore and we're stuck with just our letters, which is exactly what we want. All right, and this will be a Y. There we have it. So we have our letters and they conform exactly to what we want. They can, they're conforming to our um, to the actual shape of the tiles. Now I'm going to go one step further. We're going to group all those. So those are all my letters. Okay. I'm going to duplicate the group and then hit Command E, which is going to make the entire group. Let's just make the original group. It's going to make the entire group into one layer. Okay. So now we have no group. What we're going to do? We're going to give it a little bit of a blur. We're going to do a filter blur and to Gaussian blur. And that's again just to match everything else that's going on in our image, right? It wasn't like perfectly. You know, it wasn't perfectly well defined before. So we, we're going to need that little bit of blur. And then I'm going to double click on here. Well, let's put a quick bevel and emboss as well, just to make it look like these are um, actually inset. I'm going to click down. We're going to bring our size down to like one. There we go. So you can see that it's looking like they're inset. And our color here, we don't want white, right? Because that's the, these tiles aren't white. So we're going to choose a very light colored wood. There we go. And we can see that's where those highlights are showing up now. And our global light, we can just kind of like choose around where we want these, um, where we want these to be. All right, and let's just lower the opacity. So we've got that bevel and emboss on there that's kind of working pretty well as, as well. Um, let's put an outer glow on here, and we're just going to choose a color, and this is going to look kind of like they're burned in because that might be how they do the letters. Outer glow, and we're going to change this from normal down to multiply. See, we've got that outer glow there. All right, and let's just change this color. Looking pretty good. Our size we'll just bring down so it's quite a bit smaller and our opacity will bring down as well. So it's just got a little bit of that glow on there that's just kind of like helps the letters bleed out a little bit with that bevel and emboss. And bevel and emboss is just a little too strong, so we're just going to change that. Lower opacity just a little bit more. They're not they're not beveled in very much. And there we go, guys. So instead of saying, see the world, which was nothing wrong with that. I just wanted to show you guys a really cool example on how you could do something like change letters. So we went through and we replaced the original wood with something we just basically just grabbed off the internet. We completely replaced the texture from a blank texture sample. It's very, very cool. Then we created letters and we warped them all into place. And then we added a couple layer effects on those letters to get them looking perfect. And this really does look like a great image. And you can use these basically the same techniques to replace like lettering or, you know, symbols or things like that on anything you can think of. So guys, thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. And I can't wait to see your edited images. If you guys do this, um, I would recommend, you know, street signs and things like that. Make them say something funny and absurd and uh, then Instagram them and people are like, whoa, it says that. And you're like, yeah, it does. I made it say that, but <laughs> have fun with it. Guys, thanks so much for watching Flurn. I'll learn you guys later. Bye, everyone.